analysis. I'm doing my own thoughts on this. Um, okay, but this is your chart. And what I think it means to, in my experience with these people that have these same placements and shit. <laughs> okay, like, okay, you're, you are a Libra and it is in the 10th house. So everybody sees your beauty and everybody sees your monogamous relationships. And you are a Venus and Scorpio. So you put all your, in the 10th house. With is your reputation and your career and how you work with people and your ego is there in front of everybody on stage and but your venus is in scorpio which means you're jealous and love and you're possessive over people and um you could be ch cheating on the person that you're accusing and accusing of that person of cheating on you but you're really the one cheating on them because because you want to get to know people and you can't help it and getting to know people in your head in your heart they, means it's sex. That's the only way to get to know them and death and transform each other just to get to know each other. What part are you going to play when I bring you this stinger? Your Mars is in Scorpio, which means you are super jealous and violent when you get mad and you get revenge. And that Mars is how you get mad in your sexual expression. It's in the 11th house of your friends. So you treat everyone with the same medicine that they gave you because you want it to be fair. But like, so you might steal all your friends, you know? <laughs> Friends, friends, I don't know, but like, you're really emotionally serious with your friends, and you, uh, you fight with everyone, your friends. <laughs> your third house is in Pisces, which is how you write, how you communicate, so you can understand the language of heaven. And this means, um, your Sagittarius rising, which means you travel around, you drive around and stuff, everyone knows you as a good ride to drive around in places, and you know where everything is. You're not like a lost, lost Pisces like me. Your Lilith is in Cancer, and are you still there? Are you still with me? Because five, six, seven. Okay. Your Lilith is in Cancer, and it's in the seventh house, which is ruled by Libra. It's the balance scales. And the Lilith is, you know, Adam and Eve. Uh, uh, Adam, Eve was like not uh, Lilith, but Lilith was the first uh, uh, wife of Adam. So um, she was like Lilith and Adam were before Eve and she was like fuck you Adam why don't you cut your ribcage out and uh, pleasure your own self and stop demanding me of doing things I want to do things my own way I don't need this Dominic stupid ass guy telling me what to do and be a slave and he thinks that's his religion like I have to treat him like he's God no and then she becomes even more angrier when Eve is created, I guess, because she wants the babies of them or some shit, and she puts curses on them. But anyways, this is how your Lilith is character is in Cancer. So you're a big ass bully. You're you uh, are communicative with every. You're you're connected to everyone, and it's in it's in the um, fifth, sixth, seventh house Libra. So you're, you're proud of your beauty and your relationships. And other people, you see everyone different from you as a Gemini, a two-faced liar, but you keep on attracting all these liars. But in the fifth, sixth house of day-to-day -day routines, you actually are the Gemini, and you have to communicate this way, and you're still storytelling, and your lies. You have to lie anyways. You have a, you know, multiple personalities every day. Okay, um, which your fifth house is in Taurus, which is a stable heart and a beautiful heart that you might have. In a, a financially secure heart, and uh, you think love and is money and uh, um, stability, kind of I don't know, comfort. I don't know. You could you don't deny ple your heart doesn't deny pleasure. I don't know. You are tenth house Libra, which means you everyone sees your relationships and they think that you're going to be married to them because you've been with them like for two months a, a piece or something. Just like that's what they think of you. Your fifth house is in Taurus. Okay, yeah. Your ninth house, okay, your eighth house is in Leo, so you might actually die of a heart problem or disease, but you will be famous when you're dead. After you're dead, you get you get to receive your fame that you can't even enjoy because you're dead. But you will be well, you will be, like, everyone, like, knows you, you know what I mean? Everyone will know you in, in, in a sense. Like, you'll become famous for dying. <laughs> Don't die, though, but... It's, and, yeah... Because it's in Leo, you might have a heart problem that makes you die. You have a heart problem in your family or anything like that. And you'll fight for your heart. Maybe you'll have to deal with... You're not even old enough to worry about this, right? Okay, um, 
Your North Not your North Not is in Libra, which means you came here to have a relationship. That is your purpose for balance and beauty, and it's in your tenth house, which is your career and how your reputation is, how you're gonna be remembered. And it's and it's your hard work and your relationships. You just came for that to gain that, and you must um, lack it. So you already reco you already recover and teach Aries being a leader, being fast, I don't know, whatever, being war person, doing things quickly. I don't know. Your Saturn is in Pisces. This is how it gets real. Your Saturn is in Pisces in the third house, Pisces. This means your father was a fucking liar and he made you a liar too. It means you are a, you could be a publisher of this freaking amazing spiritual stories and you could be a psychic, but it can be taken away from you. Like it was you, you are a psychic. You have these abilities. You are spiritual and compassionate, but if you're not this, you could learn a hard lesson and get a disease and you could be going through foster care because your parents, your dad, rather do drugs and take care of you. Even if he showed you unconditional love, but he didn't want to take no responsibility for you, but he gave you what he could and you had to forgive him, learn forgiveness through him and that you turned into a liar for him. And you were forgiving him, so you would suck up to him like you are, you know, treating him like, you know, the soul, you know, that everyone is, I guess. And you communicate with multiple creative um, spirits, of course, obviously. What you say is in your spirit or something. Your Mercury is in Libra, so you have a beautiful voice because Venus is beauty. And it's meant to be looked at. It's an inanimate object. It's the scales of balance. Maybe it's Maybelline, whatever. So, like, your sun sign, your ego, is in your 10th house. So, that you're on display. So, everyone will see you as very beautiful in all your relationships. But when you're at home, you have more fights going on in your comfort zone. And you just like to start shit because you're a dumb bitch. Because you're a Libra and you break the scales. And you're just, you're just embar and you're embarrassed. And you're embarrassed of, like, um, how you even are when they try to tell you, let me know how much you weigh. But listen to this. Your crowns and Libra, that's how you heal yourself. Your ego and your relationships, you're constantly doing that. You always have a perfect relationship. You keep on healing it because you're a professional. Your sea rest is in Libra. Everyone comes to you because you're beautiful. They come to you for arm candy. They come to you because they feel like they're being married to you. And you bond with them so well and it heals them. And it heals you to bond with other people too. It's a magical playground of uh, teeter-totter. Your, your palace is in Virgo. You're lucky with a diet that's good for you. You're lucky with a day-to-day -day routine that you can exist in and that you have creativity in that. You could do this every day. Whatever thing that you are creative with and how you decorate your house is with perfection and OCDC. You might even be a hoarder. You might not be. Mm -hmm. And your, your Juno is in Capricorn, which is your reputation, and you want to marry somebody that will be in that with you. And... You might marry somebody on the stage just looking for the same goal as you and, um, have, you know what I mean? Uh, physical cameras, being in camera is the best bet for your fucking ass. You, being a Vista and Libra, I mean, how many times have you been married <laughs> is what this means, like. But you will fight, yes. This means you will fight with in your family, fight for your family because it's cancer to have a family. People don't want to see you have a baby. They just want you to get rid of it. But you're like, no, I want to have a fucking home. I need a home. And I and it will cause you like to have a fucking heart attack. <laughs> I don't know, you know what I mean? And the family and, and taking care of kids is your eighth house in despair. Like you can take care of kids. Kids and chaos is kids and chaos is what it is. And your relationship with kids anyways is very stable. If I next to school, you'll be like, I don't know how to deal with this kid, but I'll just feed him and um, spoil him with money. Or, you know what I mean? Yes, that is crazy because I love, like, I don't have any kids. Um, I feel like I can't have kids, but maybe one day in the future I will have a child. 
Um, if you do, you'll have a beautiful like, child, I and you like, you have a beautiful child is what it means. Fifth house, your heart and your children are beautiful. Taurus is Venus. You're already a Libra, so you're already beautiful for on the camera. So you need to just go reproduce another good-looking soul like you. <laughs> No, at all. No, nothing that I like that. Uh, your soul. And another thing. You drive around and travel. Thing, um, you drive you say, around. How you, oh, go ahead. Okay, also, your ninth house is how you're going to sleep. It's your philosophy. It's your view of God. Perfection. A purest mind is Virgo. Yours is a Virgo. You make sure everything's organized. You do your OCDC before you go to bed. Like, right before you go to bed, you're running off your nerves. But when you wake up, when you wake up, you feel like you're on drugs. You're a psychedelic Pisces again, you're obviously completely different from when you wake up to when you're going to bed, stressing yourself out to be perfect for tomorrow's psychedelic, irresponsible day. You know what I mean? Like, oh my gosh. That's yeah. crazy because I am, I am OCD. My yeah. apartment, it has to be clean before I go to sleep. When I wake up, before I take a shower, before I brush my teeth, I clean up. And that's just the habit. Um, when I'm cooking, I don't keep any dishes in the sink. When I go to sleep, any of that. And if I day out, I wash my dishes. I make sure everything is clean. Like, mm. if something is scratching on my wall, it bothers me. <laughs> like, all this stuff. Before you go to sleep. And your emotions is your moon is in Virgo. Your mom made you OCD. See, she was a, a critical psycho, probably. And also, was she? When she told you, she was like Mother Dearest for you, but not in your environment. In your environment, it was like war. And it was like, put yourself in sports and be a leader in your, for your, and be by yourself because you can learn how to move out faster and get rid of the fucking bullshit and think about or care of yourself and be your own hero. If you could, because you fought so much, and it's like, you'd cause drama because you want a family and a home. You want a house is what you fight for the most. You know, no family and kids. That is crazy, like, and then every time you were saying stuff about, like, my daddy, um, like, I don't really like just talking to him, and I was like this. I do like disrespect him and shit. Like, it's crazy. I and he would tell you to shut up and you would be a gossip. Yeah. You, you would tell him to shut up. But this could make you be a publisher and a writer, but you don't see yourself as a writer or anything. You seem like you think you fail, but you could be one to create a writer because the third house is writing, communicating, being a, being a public speaker is the gift and opportunity you can have. But you... You become confused in that and also diffused and stuff when you talk it, but you can you can be a psychic and a communicator and a, a automatic writer who the and fuck you know, knows like uh, um how you say a psychic mm -hmm. you know sometimes like i see stuff before it even happens like it, it, it's just it's crazy like it's, it's really crazy. you are the um, I'm, like that, you are like the that, You are the underworld inside that upper world. You are the underworld inside of the upper world. It's okay. You are, you are. Okay, you have Mercury and Libra, so it means you do have a beautiful voice. And your moon is in Virgo, which means day-to-day -day routines help you with your emotions. And if the person's outside of your daily -to -day routine, you freak the fuck out. And you're critical of yourself, and your mom was critical of you, too, and she taught you daily routines. And you become obsessed with uh, that. <laughs> Listing, making a list of criticism, making yourself be emotional is like making a list be like, I'm going to plan on breaking down in a... At 6 o'clock today, or 2.43 p.m. I'm not reading nothing. Okay, your Mercury is in Libra. I'm looking at your birth chart. That's what I'm looking at. Your Venus... Okay, listen to this. This will make more sense than anything. Your Venus is your love and relationship, what you're looking for in others and how you are. Your Venus is in Scorpio, which means death, sex, and transformation. You transform others through your relationship. You are... 
you're using other people for their money, but you don't know what give and take is. Like you take more and you give more and that's just how a relationship with the money is. And listen, your Mars is in Scorpio, which means you are the most jealous, violent person when you're mad. And you get everyone to shut up. Yeah, Gemini, it'll be your turn in a minute. Okay. Let's... I can see you very well. But you actually, I think you're, um, this is wonderful. You are, you're not on the cusp either. Okay, you are a Gemini. And you're, yes, you are a multidimensional, multiple personality person. But you, you could be dark angel. But then again, this is, this moon is the best moon you can ever have. For Gemini, because it means you were a true friend and you were seeking the knowledge of the universe, and uh, your your mother was probably telling you you're an out, teaching you and making you feel like you're an outcast all where you go anyways, and a weirdo because you see and observe things that nobody else take will take for granted, or they do take for granted, or they just don't notice because they're too scared and humiliated and afraid of humiliation, but you're not, and you're a persistent, friendly person that does things and thinks their own way from within in your own emotions, and you want to be mentally in tune. Your Mercury, you, you think so? Your Mercury, you're so unique, like, is where you stand, and people think that that's off, like, you know, you think that they think they're, it's not, it's just a ridiculous outcast feeling, because you learn how to treat everyone equally, and instead of being yeah, and you can observe people from a distance and not have to be ridiculous when you can just be at peace and dreamy and good future. I don't know, whatever. Anyways, you could you could see aliens because you're intuitive. You're pretty psychic. Because the mind the mind helps you see spiritual uh, visions and stuff, and you can be very informative anyways because you're a Gemini. 8B, jack of all chains, master or none. Your Mercury is in Gemini, which means you think before you communicate. You talk at the right times when you don't interrupt people. Because Gemini is at home with Mercury. But me, I talk over people, and I talk a lot, and I talk too much, and I crash the subject. Yours would be more like you think before you talk, <laughs> even though Gemini is this multi-dimensional personality, talkative person, even though you can be that. Yeah. Your Venus is in Cancer, which means this is your love. And this is, you want to bring everyone home and invite them with food and pleasures of nourishment and intimacy and um, cuddling and just cuddle, you know what I mean? Being other birthday's mother, like they just come to you even financially. It's crazy. Your Mars is in Libra. So you make everyone feel like they're in a relationship with you before you ever had sex with them. You bond with them. You charm them. You make them feel like, yeah, you, you don't want to just have a one night stand. You want to base things off a relationship when you turn turned on during sex and you meet the needs of others and it's a beautiful thing uh and your jupiter is in leo which you are lucky with getting drama creative like plays happening for you and just your products like you could probably be a beautiful singer you could probably be amazing at music and sewing and just whatever creative thing that you put your uh mind into your philosophy it could be working for you like parties you could make, play you could have, throw good party games if you just act like you know you want it you know what i mean you have lucky with things like that like in, with relationship with your children okay your saturn is in aries which means your dad was like the one that was aggressive with you or huh it gave you a false identity of okay so he gave you a false identity of yourself like you don't know who you are, the I am, how to re, re how to react to other people, how to be a persona, but you seem pretty really awesome. You could give you a gift of knowing who you are as well. And your dad your dad taught you how to survive by yourself. Like you 
had to be your own caveman, you know, you had to learn your philosophy is just attention is love to you probably because you're Jupiter is in Leo. <laughs> but anyways, your Uranus is in Virgo, so everything that you do that's like abnormal and unique and stuff is pretty much organized and put together and perfect. Your Neptune is in Scorpio, so you probably are on camera during sex or something. Your Pluto is in Virgo, so you day-to-day -day routines and working helps you isolate yourself and doing chores. Your Lilith is in Aries, so you act now or never. It's the I am right now. And this is how I'm going to act. If people don't want to see you be aggressive and cuss, but you do it anyways and become proud of it, like that you survived this bullshit. And, um, yeah, and that you can act now or never. I mean, it's forcing you to be this way. How else are you going to, like, move your hand to block somebody or save somebody from drowning, being a hero every day? You're like a superman, like you are a hero. You And your moon in Aquarius gives you this self-importance that you know everything and you know this idea of what heaven could be like on earth and that you are so in touch with God that you think you are God because, and it gives you this, um, lo this gives you God's love to give to other people, but you're not allowed to personalize God's love. You're supposed to equalize it. But what you do is bring, is you want your mother's, um, your Venus is in Cancer, so it means your mother, you want your mother's, um, approval of whoever you're going out with, or somebody to set you up with somebody, or you stray away from even being in a relationship with somebody, unless that kind of happens or something. Even if you're, you have sex hypocritically. <laughs> and it's not a quickie, it's like, you know, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're pretty accurate. Uh, my old man taught me how to uh, sort of fend for myself because he took off when I was eight. He never looked back. So that's true. Being as Aries. And, uh, I, was a D I was a DJ for years at clubs, so I always had a throw party. And, uh, yes, you were in Leo. You know exactly how to throw a party. Wow, this is amazing. I'm listening. This is incredible. Okay, let's... Yeah, one night stands with women three ways. Like, Leo rules that pleasures of party pleasures. It does. And um, your cryon is in Pisces. The way you heal yourself spiritually, psychically, you can heal your, you could And being compassionate to other people and kind and forgiving and Jesus complexing. You know what I mean? Like, True light of unconditional love. Anyways, your sea rest is in cancer, so the way you heal other people is by being other people's mother anyways. By being in a relationship with them. Making them feel like they are wanted and they're at home and nourished emotionally. What? Your palace is in Gemini, so you're multiple dimensionally communicating, communicating. In your creative products. Your Juno is in Leo, so you're going to marry somebody who's got the spotlight, too, and a narcissist. And you a secret. You keep, you keep all your relationships a secret, and no one knows who you're truly going out with. But you do. Yeah, because it's none of their business. You don't want to share that their love. You want to isolate them and be in your own world and be like, have something of your own and be their own. You don't need that to be mixed with all the other poisonous people. Like, so much for their ass. I, I'm going to have my own relationship. Bye. You know what I mean? Okay. Thank you ever so kindly. I'm done with it. Thank you, Toodles. That's the story of that's the glory of love. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Anytime. Okay, I'm filling out. 1225. Okay, because my little Lincoln app. I want it to be the same. Because you have to grow in the sky and it's like precisely yours. Nobody else's lives this fucking astral to you in more than just 12 signs, even though they're included in your reality. So you were October 20th, 1995 at 1225 p.m. And we're going to calculate that right now. <sighs> in English. Mm. It's calculating. 
So thanks for being patient with me. Okay, you are a Libra, okay? I'm going to... Um... Uh huh. It's all still the same stuff, and that's like really crazy. Like, how did you know that I'm? I like to read. Like, how do you know I'm married? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, it's just really crazy. Like, how I'm OCD and make sure my apartment is clean every time before I go to sleep and when I wake up. Like, how do you know? I'm just saying, like, it's just so amazing because how do like how do you know that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just. Mm -hmm. Back then, um, it was the reason we not friends anymore. It was because you know it was drama. Uh huh. Oh, um, listen to me. Like listen, listen. Let me tell you why you don't have any friends. Is what you think you don't have friends, but you are hung out with a lot of people. Listen to this. Your mom was also your friend. Your mom was somebody who was telling you not to talk to people, and she told you. I mean, this may not seem like a friend to you. But uh, she was supposed to be your friend, but she became someone who's a, not a friend, like an egotistical maniac, and tells you how to dress, not to be awkward, not to talk to weirdo people, like very stressful for you. And then also, at the same time, she was a two-faced and she wanted to keep you there and let you uh, hang out, but uh, like as long as you want, as old as you want, like a brat you could be. And uh, because your Mercury is there in the 11th house as well, conjunct your moon in Virgo, your daily routine. So she treated you like an inanimate object, but um, she criticized the fuck out of you like you wasn't good enough for her. And she and she also criticized you into like you can't have friends and you became dead to the world when you cut everyone out of your life because you want to start all over because they're not transformed good enough for you. But you do transform others and you treat them like they're dead to you, like they're nothing because... You are so insane <laughs> because your love tells the Scorpio the darkness, and it and it just it it takes everyone out. Of, like you don't believe in anyone anymore, and friends. Your Pluto is in the love house, so you have secret sex with friends and secrets with friends. I mean, your Mars is there, so you're so jealous of friends, and you steal all of them. You're a good researcher with who they are. You know what I mean? And you have, you like, you would have sex with your friends, 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 and then you would accuse them of cheating on you. And your mo moon, you're like, your moon is in Virgo, so if they're out of your lifestyle, your fucking everyday routine, the time that you woke up and they're not woken up with you, you get mad because you're a fucking dumbass. <laughs> is, is, is this true? <laughs> Your sex life has to do with it. Yes, that's right. That's right. That is your moon in the 11th house of friendship. Mm -hmm. That's because your Mercury is there. And she's fake. But she's beautiful too. You have a beautiful friend and mom who you communicate with. Right? Inside of you... And also you have, she, she was beautiful, and also inside of you, you feel like your mom when you're around your friends. You become their mom, like your mom was to others. Is that true? Thank you. <laughs> Uh -huh. Transformation, transforming them, desire. Like, you don't want a pussy god when you're alone with your 
friends. You don't want a pussy friend either. This is because your Pluto in Scorpio is in the 11th house. And when you communicate, your Mercury is in Libra. How you balance your relationships. You want to put your relationships in your friendship zone. You want to put them on social media with you. And you want to steal everyone else's friends too. Because your Mars is erasing everything. You want to erase it. You want to die. You want everyone to die. This is your fucking passion in a relationship. You love them to death. And you want to know who's going to go with you. Mm. In the 10th house, you want to put them in your work relationship, too. And cameras, too, if you have... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, true. You could be murdered by your uh, friends. Because that's what you'd be paranoid about because you could be murderer of the friends. Don't be anything like that, though. Because your Mars is in oh, oh war. Scary, it's it's in war and death with your friends, too. Because it's all about the cult knowledge and the death. The, like, it's a real true sign. But your eighth house is Leo. You'll be in so much drama. And the, you'll be the heart of the death <laughs> because of it. I wouldn't worry about it too much if you're super balanced in the tenth house as well. Because you can just, like... Your relationship picture. You're a picture of everyone's, like who you're with, especially your husband or wife. You would probably have that picture of who your next w new partner is, even if it wouldn't last because you're a monogamous one. You have multiple ones. You also could make money off your children as well. You can make money off your children because your fifth house is in Taurus. You'll put them in your life to play a part in your life. <laughs> like your kids will be, your kids will be responsible for making your death stable because it's um, the ninth house is in your fifth house, eleventh house in Scorpio. Because when you're dead, I don't know. It's really strange. With other people. I don't know. You don't want to die alone. But you keep on cutting everybody out of your life like it's nothing when it is. Everyone can change any day. I feel like you just met them the next day. You'll put up with their bullshit, you know? But you'll be so judgmental and critical. And day to day, if you become a fucking drinker, you'll be alcoholic like an idiot because you want to feel the same way every day and you can't. Your Neptune is in your rising sign, so you can be a chameleon for others. You can make a you can be very serious when you're in front of people right away, and also you look you become off as unusual and friendly and in, inventive because your Uranus is there. Your higher self is right in the picture, like right when someone sees your face, right when you acquaint yourself. You are, like, expanding and lucky with how you react to other people and how unusual you are. And psychic, you could be with Pisces there. You're, you're a chameleon, too. Your face is meant for cameras, bitch, because your Neptune's in the motherfucking first house. Sagittarius, which means you, you probably drive a lot of places to get your experience with your journey. To meet people at base value is a journey. Like, you have friends everywhere and you say you don't because it's black there to you <laughs> but it's funny uh-huh <laughs> yeah yeah Yeah, the six. This is not psychic at all. Astrology is just a social opportunity. That's all it fucking is. This is my analysis, and this is just the way I think. But um, this is uh, you can't. There's no such. Yeah, there's no such thing. Like there's no such thing as um, astrology without the astrologer. So that that's just me telling you what it's telling me. That's what it is. I'm interpreting your astrological forecast and your picture in the sky of your chart. Doesn't mean this has anything to do with you. It is you, part of you, <laughs> I guess. But it could be a side effect from you. You know what I mean? And it,
Uh -huh. Yeah. Thanks. And yeah. Everyone should learn how to read their own chart and read others, and we can all read each other for fun because we can look at it in a, a distant way instead of harm each other with the criticism that, that we have. Fun. You know, it that would be. be well, you're that Juno. You want to marry somebody to put yourself out there, and you want to marry somebody like your dad. But who knows? <laughs> you might marry someone like your dad, an authority, 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 authoritative figure. An authoritative figure, but he's not going to be irresponsible. He's going to actually be disciplined and take care of himself with a career or something, or stubborn and just take things personally and as a little serious or some shit. But whatever, you're you're emotionally like, serious in a relationship. Right now, he's the person I'm with right now is stubborn, like he's. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So my talk to about the person I'm with right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the people that you have sex with are narcissists, too. Like, you're a narcissist during sex. What the fuck? Probably. Because you cause drama during sex, too, because your eighth house is in Leo, and it's creative projects of occult knowledge. Who knows? And you might have multiple orgasms during sex because it rules the regeneration system, and you find pleasure in it. You don't deny it because your heart desires it because it's in Taurus. So your eighth house is in the um, sex house of death, Leo. Your, Venus, your Mars is in Scorpio. I mean, it's conjunct your Venus. And everyone is about this freaking... It's pointing to sex, okay? And where you're jealous, which is... You're with your friends. The social media. That's... It's everything for, to you. Your friendships, everything. So that's cool. You want everyone to be part of your friendship in your daily routine because of the Virgo. So you're like a super true friend or in your hopes, wishes, and dreams, but you are a Scorpio in the head of the f body of friendship. <laughs> a beautiful face, a beautiful friend, a very intimidating friend too, a very fear fearless, ruthless, chaotic friend. Your mother was the same way, but in the inside, you were so like, um, yeah, like that, <laughs> I guess. And you can understand the language of heaven, so you could be a psychic, but it, and in your hands, do you have any problems with your feet? I mean, your feet, your feet could have any weird problems, even though it expands, like you travel, do you walk a lot because you're Saturn, you're Sagittarius, 10th, 12th house, I don't know, but you don't have the Aries willpower, your willpower is insane, it's all about, your Saturn's in retrograde from within, you can be psychic from within, I don't know. Your Saturn's in retrograde. This means that you have opportunities to take drugs and have bad experiences with them or good experiences with them because Neptune and Pisces rules drugs. Your Neptune is in Capricorn, which means you want to be on cameras and you sh you sh your face is on cameras in the first house. So everyone sees it right away that you act like you look like a fish drug addict or something. <laughs> you look delusional. You look. You look like an illusion, like you put on an illusion right when you meet people. Who knows? But you're still super beautiful in the 10th house on camera as so being a model. And then you'll be famous. And, you know, it's so cool. <laughs> With your storytelling crazy loud bullshit every day. Because 6th house Gemini, but you're also this Libra. Like, good God. In the 10th house, on stage all the time. Good for you. Amazing. And healing everybody. All Libra stuff. Like Avril Lavigne. Libra. Oh my gosh. You see, you'll be super beautiful to look at. It'll be fun. <laughs> and to listen to, I guess, because... Okay, let's do that. Give me a month, day, year, and time of birth, and okay. I'll do everyone's chart. For... Are you looking for it or something? Your kid. Let me tell you how... Can you look? Can you give me your kid so I can tell you what kind of mother you are and how she feels about her mom? <laughs> that would be fun. I don't have any kids. Oh well, damn. Your your fifth house is in Taurus. You have a financially secure. You make money off having kids. Beautiful kids. Mm, fat, well fed kids probably. <laughs> well, not really. They would be very. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 
<laughs> do you have do you do you also have multiple relationships with animals as well? Like you get everybody to take care of them. You what? You don't like it? Well, that would be fun to see you with animals. What kind of animal would you choose? And uh huh, I love dogs and cats and all animals. <laughs> yeah. Okay then, what chart you want me to do now? Whose chart do you want me to do? Whose chart? And, and have at it. Give me the month, day, year, and time birth. Saturn in the third house is your biggest planet. You are a liar, story, t storyteller, and a voice, different voices, multiple ones. What is that? A ghost? Okay, you said, so you only lie to men, you said, and delusional people, and you talk to them like they're delusional? <laughs> Weird. It's funny. Well, that's good. Yeah, give me an estimate. Uh, I, I, I have not put an estimate of your time of birth of seven 40 what? 5 or something? I don't know what you said. But I didn't put that in there. So I'm just... 7.34 you say? P.M. or A.M.? Yeah. I think that's what I'm Okay, well we'll look that up in a minute. Yes, it needs to be the exact time or I'll change your chart to Rosalie because this is, satel this is satellites taking pictures of your astrological makeup in the sky, the forecast it knows every moment, even in history, of when you were born. And it could tell you what your chart is like and who you are in this body of that astrology. Okay, I'm about to give, I'm about to give you the exact time I was born. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm See... Okay. 12 25. 12 25 p.m. is what I'm going to type in. 12 25, 12 25. My Wi Fi is slow. PM? So that's noon. No, that's midnight. That's noon, yeah. 